Hey clan, it's Ross Stisi, the Bearded Broker. Today's video is covering the first home fund. If you are a first time buyer in Scotland, this video is definitely for you. £25,000 is available from the government to help you along the way with your deposit. So hopefully this will help you. Share if you can and we will see you at the end. Speak soon, thanks. Hands up here if you are actually a first time buyer. Mm. Yeah. And hands up here if you're a parent trying to get a spare bedroom back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that might be a few years. Uh, so ultimately, 13 years ago, the government brought out the lift scheme. It was called something else back then, but they renamed it. And it's, it's ultimately, it's the low cost incentive for first time buyers. And whilst that has been fairly successful in different areas, as house prices have gone up in value, the lift scheme, they haven't been changing the thresholds enough. Because up, not, not to get into the lift scheme too, too deeply, but it was all based on thresholds, what you could buy, where you could buy it, how much you could buy it for, based on income, far too many restrictions. So whilst it helps some people, it's, it's left a lot of other people behind, and especially in East Lothian because house prices in East Lothian have been going up quite significantly but the thresholds have never changed well, once or twice in 13 years so you're miles away and then you know several years ago they brought out the help to buy scheme which was a bit more popular and a lot of people have heard about the help to buy scheme again just as many restrictions over house prices very very means tested around income and, and all that sort of thing and that is only designed for new built houses the problem with new build houses is they're a lot more expensive to buy in the first place. So we can only now assume that the government thought to themselves, right, all these first time buyers have been left behind in Scotland, doesn't fit in the lift scheme mould, doesn't fit in the help to buy scheme mould, so how are we going to get some more money into the economy and how are we going to help first time buyers? So this is when they brought out this first home fund a month ago today, I think it yeah. was, a month ago today. So yeah. Right. Can I just ask for a, a show of hands of how many people have actually heard of the lift scheme? So quite a few of you. So as Ross has kind of touched on, it's not well publicised by the Scottish Government for the obvious reason that they set aside a budget which is for one financial year and that is for the whole of Scotland. So if they were to nationally advertise that, the funds would probably go in a, a couple of months, I would say. Um, so what are the key elements of the fund and what does this shared equity actually mean effectively? So it's exclusive to Scotland, it doesn't happen in England, they've got similar schemes with help to buy. Um, it's been designed and introduced effectively as a financial support from the government to help you get onto the ladder for the first time where you've not got a large deposit or um, your income is maybe restricting the amount you can borrow to buy properties. As Ross has touched on, the, uh, the market is very buoyant at the moment and prices in East Lothian are considered. Again, that will be contributed by the amount of new builds that are being, uh, being uh, built at the moment, but also uh, Muscle Brass, Trinane, Wallyford, these are all very popular areas just now. So in short, you can seek up to £25,000 from the government to be used as a deposit on top of the deposit that you need to contribute. You need to contribute a minimum of 5%, which is based on the purchase price. So to give you a brief example, or a very simplistic example, if you're to buy a property for £100,000 and you claim the full 25% from the government, you would have to put 5% down, which would be 5000 you You'd have a mortgage of £70,000, and um, that would make your cost effectively more affordable on a monthly basis until you then maybe look to remortgage once you've, you've got a better salary or you've made some savings and then you would reduce the share from the Scottish Government. So it is known as a shared equity loan, this 25000 that you would get from the Government. And Ross is just going to... Yeah, so what does shared equity mean? So essentially it means that you are sharing the cost, so, so you're sharing the deposit 
with, in this example, you're sharing a deposit with the Scottish Government. So what will happen is they will give you what, what, whatever you claim, so you can claim up to £25,000 with hardly any restrictions at all. So you can go for the full 25000 and the government will then take a share in your property. But you get to make all the decisions over that property, you get to decide when you sell it, when you remortgage it, you get to decide what colour you want the walls to be and what you want the garden to look like. It's, it's, these are your decisions, but when you come to sell it, they will take a share, as, as in a percentage share, when, when you come to sell it down the line. Now, you may sell it in three years' time or 30 years' time, it doesn't really matter. The government don't insist as to when you come to sell it, so it's, and that's how they will get their money back. Paul? Do you have to borrow the full £25,000? No, you do not. It all depends on your circumstances and how much you can get for a mortgage. There's no limit being set in terms of a minimum from the Scottish Government, but it is likely that your lender, your mortgage lender, is going to set a kind of threshold of maybe minimum 10%, something like that. It'll, it will vary lender to lender. So, But from the Scottish Government's point of view, there's no minimum in terms of the amount you can borrow. And a question we've been asked a lot is number four already. Are there any restrictions on the type of property that I can buy? So like the, the, the help to buy scheme is for new build, for example, and some you can't buy ex-local authority and so on and so forth. With this, you can buy any type of property at all, other than commercial property, and you can't buy it as a buy to let for example, but as long as you're a first time buyer, buying your first home and it's <coughs> on the market, you can buy it from a family member, a friend, it's absolutely fine, it could be built today, it could be built a hundred years ago, there are no restrictions, other than it's not for commercial and it's not for buy to let Sounds to you, Petru, so are there any other restrictions? Surprisingly, there's, there's not many, so it's called the First Home Fund. Obviously, it's designated to be for first-time buyers. If you are joint applicants or a couple looking to buy a property and one of you has already owned a property in the past, that's okay. You can still claim these funds so long as the person who previously owned a property doesn't own that property anymore or any other property in the world, effectively. So, um, so it's, it's not a, a deal-breaker, effectively, if one of you has owned in the past. Um, as Ross said, there's no restrictions on the price, which is um, very restricted on the, the, the lift scheme, and there's no restrictions on the type of property. And that's whether it's a private deal that you were doing, so if you had a, a property, an auntie's property or something, you were interested in potentially using these funds for that, that's okay. Um, if it was on the open market, a second-hand home effectively, so property in, in Musselburgh, or a new build, you can use the funding for all those three types of properties, which again is quite innovative because um, the lift scheme didn't allow for the um, allow for, for um, private deals in the past. It had to be a property that was on the open market. So a little bit about the finances. So the maximum is £25,000. The only, the only difference would be, if, so, well not difference, but if there's two of you, two first time buyers buying a home, you can't claim for £50,000 may or may not be obvious, but it's, it's 25,000 per home, per transaction. So the two, you can be a first time buyer or one can be a previous owner, that's absolutely fine. You can qualify for 25,000 pounds. And you have to be taking out a mortgage with that money as well. You can't just claim down the 25,000, you have to be taking out a mortgage. There's some restrictions and limitations on that, which we can discuss later on. And you can take it with any other schemes like the lift scheme or the help to buy scheme, but you can use, so if you have an ISA or you have a help to buy ISA or a lifetime ISA and you're building up some money that way for the deposit, it's absolutely fine to use that alongside this fund as well. Uh, also, if your deposit is coming from parents, maybe in the room, any deposits coming from parents or, or you know, that sort of thing or savings, then Come in. Sorry. That's all right. So, so deposits coming from savings and, and payments and things like that as well is absolutely fine. <coughs> the massive, massive thing to take into consideration with this twenty-five thousand, assuming you take all twenty-five, you don't pay any interest on this money. It's an interest-free loan, so you pay no interest and you pay no monthly payments back to the government at all. It's, it's essentially free money. They get their money back when you sell the property. So if they take 
So, so if, if they take a 10% share in the beginning, because that's the numbers that worked out, when you sell it, they'll take 10% back. It's as simple as that. It's, 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 you know, it's interest-free and there's no monthly payments on it at all. That is the biggest, biggest key takeaway, I think, from, from this. So, in order to apply for the scheme, you have to have already had an offer accepted on a property. So, it's, uh, it's not something you would do at this stage. Um, the first steps would be effectively to establish your budget, do a um, mortgage agreement in principle with um, the Sissy Group, and that would establish your budget, you can get out and do the property hunt, and then once you've had an offer accepted on a property, you would then apply for the scheme. As I say, there's, there's no real restrictions, it's not um, based on your income or based on uh, the type of property. It's, it's very much that you have to be a first-time buyer, <coughs> one of you has to be a first-time buyer effectively, and I see there would be no reason why you would then be rejected for the scheme. Again, in a kind of legal perspective, we would make the offer subject to you getting this funding, so in other words, we're not going to legally commit you to buying a property until we know that you're going to have all of that funding in place effectively. Um, and the second key point on that is that if, if you have already had an offer accepted, you couldn't apply for these funds if you've already concluded missives or signed the contract, which is when you legally commit yourself to buying property effectively. Um, but timing-wise, as I say, it's when you've had an offer accepted that you would then apply for the funding, whether it be the 25000 or a lesser amount. And in terms of buying out the government share, again, a question we've been asked a lot in the last month is, is can I buy out that? Can I buy the shares back? Absolutely. The government won't restrict if you want to buy the shares out along the way, you can buy them out you know, three months later, a year later, three years later, whenever it suits your circumstances. The, the kind of rules around buying out the shares are, it's as long as you're buying out a minimum of 5% at a time, that's absolutely fine. So you can do it literally whenever you want. Uh, the example that Paul gave the other day was, if, uh, you know, if you won the lottery in six months time and you want to buy out all the shares, you could buy the whole lot out in one go. The only limitation is at the very high end, so if the last share is 10%, you can't buy 5% of that, you've got to buy the final block at 10%. But uh, yeah, that's pretty, much, pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. So how much does it cost to apply for the first home fund? The Scottish Government charge an administration fee of £550. That cost is to meet uh, the work involved from Link Housing, who administer it for the Scottish Government, and it also covers the costs for their solicitor, Harper McLeod, who are based in Glasgow and um, set up the shared equity agreement and the ranking agreement and the standard security effectively. So the £550 is payable to the uh, to Link Housing um, on behalf of the Scottish Government when you, when you apply for the scheme effectively. So I've been doing mortgages for, for 12 years and you know, I've been helping lots and lots of people out buying houses and it always comes down to the same thing. They all, they, all they ever want to know is how much does it cost me every month? So we thought, <laughs> that's always the, normal, normally the first question, how much does it cost? Uh, so we've got a couple of examples for you as to how it would work. So we took the, example number one is that an average purchase price in East Lothian based on the last stats was just over £150,000. The 2019 stats are not quite ready yet, so we've taken 2018, so just over 150. So using that as a figure, so assuming this house that you buy is valued at 150,000 pounds, and you buy it for 150,000 pounds, so you would need a deposit of seven and a half k to put into this, so that as your own savings, your mum, your dad, whatever the money's coming from. If you took the 25,000 from the government, so the first home fund, 25 in the pot. That would need you getting a mortgage of 117,500. To give you a kind of average example, your mortgage payments on something like that is anywhere between 400 and 450. If you look at that to a sort of average market rent, just in East Lothian or in Musselburgh or whatever, you're looking at 650 pounds for a one bed flat. You know, if you can get a, if you can buy a place for 150 <coughs> with, with those maths, your mortgage payments, you know, subject to your own circumstances, anywhere between 400. And 450. So that's that's the numbers. Sorry, So one of the key features of this scheme and what makes it different from the lift scheme and home stake as it was previously known 
So this is the first government scheme that will actually allow you to pay above the home report valuation and still claim government funding. Now, home reports were introduced in Scotland in 2000 and December 2008, 2000 and 2008, and these have a valuation set on them effectively, which tells you how much you can get for a mortgage and it will be based on that valuation. The market's very buoyant at the moment and uh, it's common practice that a lot of properties go above home report valuation. I mentioned those statistics earlier on that East Lothian has seen just under 12% growth in the last year. Um, so this scenario that we're going to work through here is where you would actually pay above home report valuation. So <coughs> you can imagine if there was a flat up for sale for 100 grand on Musselburgh High Street, it's going to be pretty popular. <laughs> Half the room are going to be after it. <laughs> uh, Ultimately, it's going to come down to who is willing to pay the most for it. We provide our advice alongside what we feel is the market value and, and considering the, the home report valuation. But this is just to give you an idea of how the figures will look if you were to pay above the home report valuation. So 100,000, just for simplicity for the percentages, 100,000 is the valuation for the property. Um, sorry, that should say 110. So the valuation is 100,000 for this property, purchase price 110. Your deposit would be 15,000 pounds in this instance. This is assuming that you would take the first home fund full of 25,000 pounds, you would have a mortgage of 70,000 pounds, and you're looking at payments of between 250 and 300 pounds. So contrasting with the previous um, example Ross just did, your, your deposit's a bit more because you're paying that 10,000 above home report valuation. It's important to note that anything that you did pay above the home report valuation would be an additional injection you would have to put in over and above that minimum 5% deposit that you were putting down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Look at the rental numbers in, in, in Musselburgh. You know, if you're paying seven and a half to 10,000 pounds a year just in rent alone, so if you make something like this work and, and, and buy your own place somewhere, it's, you're going to save money pretty quickly. So a little bit about the process. Again, it's all very, very process driven. So you get the right sort of team around you, professional team, legal team, all that sort of thing. You should be kind of driven along the way. There's one part of the process that is pretty much left up to you, and that is finding your, your dream home, which we'll obviously move on to, but just I'll take you through the seven steps of how the how the process works from from today to moving into a place in six months' time or three months' time or, or, or whatever, uh, if, if you decide to go down that route. So the first thing is to book an appointment with a mortgage advisor and speak to a solicitor so you can get some mortgage advice, get some legal advice. There's no point finding your dream home if you can't get a mortgage. So you can do that, you can do that completely free, it doesn't cost you a penny, and it's worth just just going through your own personal circumstances and finding out if it's going to work for you. The next thing is a mortgage advisor will help you obtain an agreement in principle from a lender. So that essentially means they've got all your information, they've got <coughs> a mortgage lender and they've asked can this person get a mortgage, they've run a credit check for example and, and they've gone through your salary slips or accounts if you're self-employed and just made sure that the numbers do stack up and they all fit. So then you can kind of go away knowing that, okay, if I find a place for 150 or 100 or 200 or whatever, it already fits, so it's already agreed in principle. You just move on to the next part, which is, it's, for me, it's meant to be the fun part. It can be a little bit stressful, but it can be a lot of fun if you let it. You, you're finding homes, you're, you're away visiting them, you're doing as many viewings as possible, you're taking advice from a solicitor, you know, how much do you think it will go for? A solicitor will be able to advise you saying, well, that one will go for £20,000 over, but that one might only go for seven over. So you'll, it's very process driven, so you just you know, follow the advice and follow the process. Once you've found your dream home, you then essentially, well, a mortgage advisor will help you apply for the first home fund. So at that point, you've, you've, you've done all that difficulty bit, and then the next part is just applying for the fund. Your mortgage advisor will apply for your mortgage, bearing in mind it's already been agreed in principle, so unless anything's changed, then it should be fairly straightforward. Then you'll go through the legal bits with a, with a solicitor, with, with Paul, for example, going through all the legal stuff. So all you're doing along this way is, one, you're finding a home, and two, you're providing documents. 
and dealing with any little stresses that come along the way. <laughs> and then, once it's all said and done, you pick up the keys and you move in and you have a painting party. It's very easy, it's very straightforward. <laughs> it works like that every time. Doesn't it? Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. So I'm going to go through the process, um, just talking about the legal side of things effectively. So, um, as I say, um, what Ross has said, first and foremost, you need to establish your budget and how much your, your money is going to stretch in this current market. Once you've established that, that's when you can get out and do the fun part and actually start looking for properties. Uh, we recommend that you look at as, as many properties in as many different locations as possible. You may have a, a specific preference, but I find it's quite important to get out there and look at properties and, and see as many as possible so that you're going to establish what you really want, but also how far your money's going to stretch in this market. Valuation is not a scientific fact, it's a matter of opinion. So at the end of the day, it's what you as a willing buyer are willing to pay and it's what a willing seller is willing to sell for effectively. So it's all in, up to interpretation effectively. You get the home report, which will provide the valuation and obviously provide you the basis for your mortgage, but it's ultimately up to you what you want to pay for that property alongside our advice, effectively. So you've established your budget, you start the fun part, you get out there looking at properties, you see something you like, you're maybe on the fence about it, have a few reservations about what some, some of the comments mean in the home report, you send the link to us, you say, Paul, interest in this property, can you give me your tuppermint surf on it? I'll have a look at the home report, I'll have a look at the brochure, I'll go through what properties I've sold for in the past round about that, looking at comparable properties as possible, and then I'll give you my advice on what I feel it's worth and what you might have to pay over and above the home report valuation. I'd quite, quite, I'd quite quickly tell you <coughs> I felt the home report valuation is too much and, uh, and that you should maybe be putting an offer in below the valuation. But at the end of the day, it's your decision I provide you all the basis, it's what you feel comfortable paying for the property at the end of the day. Based on the popularity of the property, we'll also give you advice on how we feel we should negotiate it and what our opinion is on the best way to proceed to have the best possible chances of securing the property. <coughs> we'll submit the formal offer to the selling solicitor. It will be subject to you obtaining the first home fund funding effectively. So, as I said previously, we wouldn't be committing you to anything until we knew that you were getting that government funding. And then once the offer has been accepted, you can apply for that Scottish government funding, which is something you would do in conjunction with your full mortgage application. After an offer has been accepted, you're looking at a typical time scale of about eight weeks. It takes a wee bit longer to get the funding from the government. You can imagine it's public funds, so there's quite a few hoops that have to be jumped through, don't worry, we do all that for you. Um, and in conjunction with that, at the same time, we're carrying out a legal process known as the legal conveyancing. Legal conveyancing, in short, is us establishing what the extent of the property is that you're buying. We do the contract that the selling solicitor has provided us, the title deeds, and uh, also examining any alterations that have happened to the property in the past. We'll provide you a report on the title, and we'll provide our advice breaking it down in terms of the contract and what it all means. Once you've got all your, money, uh, your funding confirmed effectively and we know that you're able to buy it on an agreed date and we've gone through all that contract with you, you're then in a position to conclude the missives or sign the contract effectively. That's the stage that you're legally committing yourself to buy that property and it's past the point of return effectively. Thereafter, you've signed the contract, that's the exciting time you, you're out at Ikea, you're away doing all the, uh, the paint party preparation, etc. Behind the sofa. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> set your mind the sofa for extra funds, etc. Uh, get the keys to your new home, effectively. In terms of your own personal deposit and contribution that you're putting down, that only becomes payable a couple of working days before you're actually due to move in and buy the property. So that five percent deposit, that's not required at the beginning of this process. If you're budgeting that you want to get a couple more months pay slips in to get all that funding together, that's fine. As I say, it's a couple of working days uh, at the latest that we require the deposit <coughs> to be sent to ourselves. Uh, that is a brief overview mm -hmm. of the uh, legal conveyancing process. Over to you guys.
<laughs> so, if you've got any questions that, that you want to ask at the moment, I know no one ever wants to be first. Or some people want to be first. Ah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait at the back first. Are you eligible to apply for the scheme if you are self employed or yes. a contractor? Yes. And for how long you have to be self employed? Yeah, so good question. It's, so it's, it's every individual on its merit. So, for example, that, that doesn't determine whether you can apply for the fund, that determines whether you can apply for a mortgage. So if someone has only just gone self-employed, trying to get a mortgage is very difficult regardless of the size of the deposit or the funds. So it's, it's then subject to that individual circumstances. So you would want to have a chat with a, a mortgage advisor, then could figure out you know, how long you've been self-employed or if you're on a contract or if you're you know fixed term contract, these sorts of things. And then we could discuss, well, yeah, you're eligible, one, for a mortgage, and two, then, therefore, you're eligible to apply for the fund. So the two are not related, So, but happy to discuss that in more detail. Yeah. Okay. Will the 25,000 definitely be through from the government for the date that you get the house? Yes. So, as I say, it takes a wee bit longer to request the funds. Um, last time I checked, they require a minimum of four weeks for the actual drawdown but you can only make that official drawdown once the mortgage is fully in place. So that's why we're saying eight weeks approximately for the whole process. Yeah. So it's it's not the sort of thing where, you know, if, you're, if your brother wanted a quick sale, for example, and it needed to go through in two weeks, that, that even at a normal mortgage and legal process, that would that, be a struggle. It does need a little bit of time. But I have always said in the years doing mortgages, I always give six weeks start to finish, so from the day I get the documents to the day you get the keys in the door, normal time scales around about six weeks. With this we're probably going to add on roughly two weeks, yeah. I think, just, just to give a little bit of leeway and just to make sure everything's applied for. The, the more, not to get too deep into it just now, but the mortgage lender won't allow us to apply for the mortgage until the funds have been agreed from the Scottish Government. So they're making sure that that is already agreed mm. from the Scottish Government, so as soon as we get confirmation from them, we can then go on and apply for a mortgage. So they're already, already saying. And then the solicitors in the background do know the legally bit. Legally bit? Yeah. That, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> legally bit. And, 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 and just making sure that the funds are ready to, to, to be drawn down. I get asked a lot about um, the, the, the shared equity loan element section and how that works obviously afterwards and, and what happens in the future when you when you go to sell it. So, um, as we've kind of emphasised here, it is a loan you're getting from the government. It'd be nice if it was a grant, um, but nothing's really free in this world. No. Um, <laughs> the, the lift scheme that's been in operation for 13 years is very much on the same legal principles, effectively. And Clancy's have probably helped over about 1,500 people use the lift scheme since its introduction. Um, now, it's been designed as... Uh, an aid to get you on to the onto the property ladder and what is a very competitive market, um, and it's it's not effectively designed to be your forever home. It's uh, a, a springboard almost to get you onto that ladder and then to build up equity. So, on a monthly basis, I get clients coming back to me that I maybe bought for five six years ago, who uh, bought under the lift scheme. They were on quite a restrictive salary at the time, so they were just starting out in their new career. They're now on a better salary, their property's gone up in value, and they're now looking to get a larger home because they're expecting a little one or they've run out of space, etc. etc. So they come back to me, we sell the property for them, and they will um, pay the government back the percentage based on the market value at this time, and you share the profits effectively, allowing that deposit to have been built up that you would then put into your next home effectively. As Ross said, you can buy the Scottish Minister's out and the Scottish Government out at any time, and it's based on the market value at the time you're looking to buy them out. Well, let's just say that, I mean, I know prices are going up just now, and let's just say prices start going down, yes. or alternatively, you need to sell the property for unforeseen reasons quite soon after you buy it, so you might sell it at a loss. Fantastic question. So, what happens then? Does, yeah. does the government's bit protected? Or do they share the loss? They share the loss. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So when you're selling the property, it has to be sold on the open market. So 
you couldn't be selling it at a reduced price, obviously, to a friend or family member. It has to be sold on the open market. But in the in the event property prices went down and you ended up having to sell it for whatever reason less than what you'd purchased it for, the government takes the hit as well as you yeah. do. So it's uh, it's good for peace of mind, effectively, that yeah. it's, it's not fixed at that initial point uh, or that rate yeah. that you got. It does. It does. See, maybe often people say, you know, if it's too good to be through a problem, yeah. yes. But when I, I did this many years ago, it was a loan to get my first property, and I had to pay an equivalent to rent. Yes, that's and right. And when I sold it, we had a profit, and the government got the profit as well. Yeah. But this does seem you know, a very, yeah. it's a very generous scheme. So, well, the, the way I see it is, is if, if you just need to take the records over the last hundred years, the government know that they're taking... So, I'll go into this in a little second, but there's £150 million in the pot that, that they are essentially investing into property. So they know that, that property prices can go down, but they know over time that property prices will go up. So they may take a hit on, on some, but on the vast majority, they are going to make money. Because if you're making money, if you're making 90% profit, they're going to make the other 10% profit. So they're happy to share in that profit with you whilst getting the first-time buyer market moving. So, so they tick all the boxes. They're helping first-time buyers. They're putting money in a pot dedicated only for first-time buyers in this bracket that don't meet these other bits of criteria. So they're, And then they're going to take a, a small slice of the profit when you, when you come to sell it. Three years' time or 30 years' time. It doesn't matter to them. They're, they're happy to put that fund away and essentially invest it, if you like, into the pot. And it's... But for me, it's, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It is a, it's a no-brainer. It is an absolutely brilliant scheme. The gentleman at the back there. Um, see if you're applying for the fund, do you lose your bonuses or might you help the buyers and your life demiser for the government? No. So the question was, if you're applying for this scheme and you've got a help to buy ISA or a lifetime ISA and you get the bonus on that, yeah. does that affect... Or do you lose it? Do you lose the no. uh, ISA bonus? No. I, you, you can use this, the help to buy ISA, the lifetime ISA, or just your standard ISA. You don't lose any bonus at all that you get from the government. That becomes still part of your deposit. Good question. Any other questions? Does it affect the amount of 25,000 or is it graduated downward? So again, a good question. So is it a fixed amount? Uh, so you can apply for 25,000 as the maximum, but you can. there's no minimum. So on paper, there's no minimum. But if you're only applying for £2,000, the Scottish Government are going to ask, why are you applying for £2,000? <laughs> and it's costing you £550 to apply. And so it's not means-tested or anything. They're basically going to say, how much do you want? And it'll, it can be dictated to by the lender. So some lenders will require you to take a minimum, i.e. 10% of the property value, for example. But there's no bottom. There's only a top, and that's... Twenty-five thousand pounds. Sorry. So I know I was late, but it's fine. You maybe missed well, a lot of it. I know, I know. It's so fine. Is there like a restricted amount of twenty-five thousand pounds? Like, so let's just say oh, only we're going to do a drawdown and see who's useless and who we actually want. Like, who's? Do you know what I'm saying? So is there like ten twenty-five thousands, or is there like five hundred twenty-five thousand for question. a minimum amount of years? You I'll be covering that very soon. I didn't miss that. <laughs> you didn't miss that. I'll cover that bit just at the very end. <laughs> Good question. Any other questions? Um, if you're oh. looking, sorry, if you're looking to buy uh, buy out the government share, mm -hmm. how do they calculate uh, how much? But obviously, if you sell it, and then they take ten percent with any profits accumulated uh, on the house. Well, what do you decide to buy them out? How do they quantify that? So the. Uh, the percentage is based on the market value at the time that you're seeking to buy that additional share effectively. So, hypothetically, you buy through this scheme and you complete in July this year. You get a big bonus or a pay rise uh, in a few months after that and want to buy this year, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you would firstly have to contact Link Housing, who administer it for the Scottish Government, and say, I'm looking to increase my stake or reduce the government's stake in the property, um, let's say hypothetically that represents 25%. So they would say, right, we'll, we'll do a valuation on your property. So let's say you bought it at 120. They might come back, again, if we're talking about three months, they might come back and say, oh, it's worth 125 now. You are, how much you're looking to buy, you can buy the full 25% or you could do a minimum of 5%. As Ross said, 
Um, the last part would have to be the kind of full 10%, um, but it would be based on the market valuation at the time, and they instruct an independent valuer to go out, and then they give you the opportunity to proceed with it or not. So when you inquire of them, if they come back and you disagree with the valuation, or after you've done some further investigations with your mortgage that's maybe not viable at that time, you can then just say, no, we'll just stick a pin in that. Yeah. So that's essentially where where they get their money back is, you know, if, if, you're, if your house has gone up in value, one, you get the huge share of the profit, but they get their percentage share. So it's, so like I say, it's, 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 it's a tick box exercise for, for first time buyers and for the Scottish government, so it's, it's brilliant. Is there a time limit to that? When you see when you're buying them out, is yeah. there a certain amount of time that you're allowed to buy them out, or can you buy them out? Great question. Time? Great question. Great question yeah. So, right now, as it stands, it's in perpetuity, which means for as, as long as, it, as you want it to be. They did, however, bring out a, a release statement saying that they intend to change it to a 20-year rule, effectively, so that you would have had to buy the government out within 20 years. Now, that statement that they released was in 2013, so that was seven years ago. Uh, I suppose my opinion on it is because this scheme or this type of scheme has only run since 2007, we're not at 20 years yet, so they're probably going to be bringing it in. As I say, it's designed to be a kind of springboard property for you, so even if you are looking to, to or you can see this being your long term property that you want to keep for life, you just have to have it in your head that you, you need to buy the government out within 20 years. So, who's got a 20 year plan? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yes. If for some reason your application has been rejected, can you? So if, 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 if it's been rejected, then can we reapply? Yeah. Good question. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out why you would be rejected. <coughs> um, <laughs> as I say, it's, it's, this is a new initiative scheme. It's not like the lift scheme where that's means tested based on how much you, income you make each year. And it's not restrictive on the type of property and size of property that you buy. So the only reason you'd be rejected is if you're not a first-time buyer. If you're not a first-time buyer, you're never going to be a first-time buyer. So, yeah. um, so uh, again, if there was individual circumstances, yeah, yeah there might be a, a way that you could reapply it. Uh, yeah, I think ultimately the main reason that it would be rejected is that you've been dishonest on the application and they find <coughs> out for whatever reason. So. The first thing buyer is probably the, the, the number one. So someone that, that owned 20 years ago and decided to put themselves down as a first time buyer and then applies. So that's uh, the only shady dealing, like if you lied about being a first time that buyer. That or, or they found out you lied about your income or you know these sorts of things. So the normal kind of stuff. If you lied about your income then there's a problem anyway, but uh, that, 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 that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Gentlemen at the back. Yeah. yeah. Is it the, the final one you'd be able to buy would be 10%? Yeah. Does that mean in essence that you can take 5% three times? Correct. Yeah. So if you took the full, if you took a percentage that represented 25% of the purchase price, you'd be able to, it's called trenching up is the legal term for it. You could do free payments based on the 5%, but the final chunk has to be the 10%. Yeah. Yeah. There's someone else. Yeah. Okay. So um, I read there's around approximately 6,000 yeah. spaces or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, is that part finite? So is it ever going to renew that 150 million or whatever it yeah. is? Is that the finite part or would they, you know, maybe next year they'll reintroduce some more yeah. funding? So out of the so funding, out of the block, I'll yeah. cover this, I'll cover all these numbers in just a wee second, but it's okay. a good question. So the block is is set aside at the moment, it expires in a year's time or when the funding is gone, and we don't know yet if they're going to do any more. We're, we're, we're unaware if there's another tranche coming mm. as far as I've read so far. Yeah, you're I mean, it's, none of these transactions have completed yet, they only came out on the 18th of December, so um, it's, it's very much a, a pilot scheme, but as I say, it's, it is similar, it's got better advantages than the lift scheme. Lift scheme's, scheme's been going for 13 years, and I expect that this money has come out of the money that they've made out under the lift scheme so um, I expect it to be successful and I do expect that there would be funding going forward but that 6,000 kind of transactions that would be based on everyone taking the full 25 grand. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so obviously when you're taking a loan in your mortgage application that 
effects or comes into play when they look at your affordability. Yeah. So I'm assuming because you're not making any monthly payments yeah. to that, it doesn't then drop down your kind of offer. Good question. So will this affect your affordability on a mortgage application? Absolutely not. Essentially, the lender looks upon this as, as a deposit. So if you, if you take 25 from the government, you've got 10 of your own. As far as the lender is concerned, you've got a £35,000 deposit. That actually means you get a much better deal from the lender as well, because the lender's risk is a, is a lot less. So if you look, the, the, the term is loan to value. So if you've got a, only a £70,000 mortgage and a £100,000 purchase price, the risk for the lender is a lot less. So one, you're getting this money from the government, two, you're getting a much better deal on your mortgage as well. So again, it sort of ticks all the boxes and everyone's a winner. Any other questions? Is there yes. specific mortgage lenders that won't lend if you're taking this? Because I know that, um, so when my parents bought their house, there was the uh, Scottish Housing Association <coughs> kind of yeah. similar scheme. Yeah. And there was certain mortgage lenders that yeah. they couldn't go with because there was that shared equity. Yeah. Good is question. So is is there a certain amount of mortgage lenders that will, that will allow you to apply for the scheme and a mortgage at the same time? Paul? Uh, that's more of a mortgage. Share the burden, you know. <laughs> the answer is yes, that, that there are there are certain lenders. So at the moment there's about ten lenders that that, that will allow it. Uh, you know, high, high street lenders and, and unknown lenders, you know, Glasgow Credit Union, for example, is a lender no one's ever heard of, or maybe one or two of you, but they do it as an example. And then you've got, like, say, Halifax that will do it. So there's, so there's, you've got the big main players in there, and you've got some smaller building societies that, that see that this is a great incentive, and, and they're all about the people, and they want to help you. So, yeah, there's, there's a handful of lenders, 10 lenders or so, that, are, that, that will allow it. So, yeah, good question. Any other questions? Any other questions? No? Well, thanks very much for that. And I think just in terms of uh, closing up, so we'll see. this will come back to your question before. So ultimately, so some high level figures that we will finish up on. Uh, I mean, ultimately, we all want to own our own little piece of the world. You know, that's, that's, that's what we're all like. We all want to own our own little bit. And with the average first time buyer in Scotland is, is 38. And that has been pushed up because no one can get money together because if they're renting, they're spending all the disposable income and then therefore they're having to live at home and they're trying to save some money. This is really going to boost that and hopefully you know, get more and more first time buyers into the market. So we do all want to own our own little bit. However, there's 150 million in the pot. It sounds like a lot of money. But someone mentioned before, if everyone takes a 25,000, if everyone takes it, that will be gone in 6,000 transactions. And that also sounds like quite a lot. In 2018, there were more than 35,000 first time buyers just in Scotland. And this fund covers the whole of Scotland. So our passion is really trying to get as much of this money into the EH postcodes as possible. This is why we've put this on. We don't know if anyone else that's advertising an event like this in our industry, but I really felt that you know East Lothian has been massively left behind in these sorts of funds, so we wanted to push this out. So, as I say, 2018, there were more than 35,000 first-time buyers, so if you, if you want to move on this, I would suggest that you move fairly quickly. We do not know if it will be renewed. It may or it may not. And just even upon advertising this event, we weren't sure how popular it would be, but in the space of 72 hours, we, we signed up, there's 100 and, 150 people signed up, so there's two events like this today, so that's how popular it's been already, 150 people signed up, and we've had loads of people afterwards contacting us saying, can I come along, can I, can I come along, and we've allowed several people to come along as well. So even if you don't have the deposit, a 5% available at the moment, and you're just kind of saving, or parents are going to give you a wee bit of help, it's worth sitting down with a mortgage advisor now and just establishing whether this is going to work for you or not. So we're offering free, completely free appointments. <coughs> we'll hand out some of these uh, leaflets and brochures at the moment. We're offering free appointments.
we're happy to sit down with you on a face-to-face -face basis. We've covered a lot there and there's a lot that kind of just goes over because there's a lot going on. So we're happy to have a follow-up appointment af after this, not straight after this, but over the next couple of weeks. And then we'll sit down with you. It's completely free. Hopefully you found that useful. Give us a like if you can on the channel, subscribe where you can, and please share this video with your friends and your family. And hopefully we've helped you today. And if you need any questions answered, just drop us a line, info at stisi, that's S-T-I-S-I dot co dot U-K. That's the Bearded Broker signing off for now.